It's great to be joined today by Rocky Anderson, a lawyer and former two term mayor of Salt Lake City, Utah, who left the Democratic Party, co-founded the Justice Party in 2011 and was that party's candidate for president in 2012. And we're going to get to that. But I want to start. You know, you have this very interesting story where you ran unsuccessfully for House of Representatives in Utah's second district in 96. And at the time, the DNC didn't fund you because they thought you were too liberal. And it's amazing what made you too liberal at the time. I mean, tell us some of the reasons that in 96 you were too liberal for the Democratic Party. It's a bit Kafkaesque, actually. Uh, I had been involved in a lot of community organizations, uh, not really electoral politics per se, but uh, just thought it was time for a change. There was an open seat. Uh, we had a, a, a district that hadn't been gerrymandered like it is now. So it really was possible for a Democrat to win that seat. Uh, I entered the race and local Democratic leaders uh, came to me and said, oh, you can't do that. We told this other guy that he was going to have it all clear that he wasn't going to have a competitive race in the primaries. Mm. And, I, and, and the, one of the women who was arguing with me about this was at Utahns for Choice, an organization that I helped found. And I said, well, wait a minute, the guy you're supporting wants a constitutional amendment to ban abortion. Are you sure about this? She says, yes, at least he'll talk to us. And I said, well, of course, I'll always talk to you. I, I helped found the organization you work with. But they said, uh, we need somebody. You were, they pointed out that I was former ACLU board president, that I opposed the death penalty, that I was pro-choice. What else? Oh, that I was divorced. Mm. Uh, our attorney general had to throw that in. And so they said, uh, well, this guy's going to back out if you run against him, but we'll go find somebody else. So they went out and found uh, who they were looking for. And that, that, that's according to a pollster who told them to win this race, you've got to have somebody who is a white male conservative Mormon. Hmm. I said, oh, great. So you, you, so religion, sex, and conservatism uh, are three of your four criteria. Uh, let's see, white, oh, and race is the fourth one. Of course. And I said, you all go ahead because you are you know this a lot better than I do. You've been working party politics. I'm just a lawyer who's concerned about our country and our community. So go pick your guy. Well, they went and picked somebody that, you know, as an announcement, he, he, he said something like, I'm going to represent those who can't represent their selves and that that was kind of typical of him for the whole race <laughs> right and so things would come up during that race you remember in 1996 president clinton signed doma the so-called defense of marriage act i opposed that i said it's unconstitutional and this guy told me on the way out of a debate you know you've just lost if you win this primary you've just lost the general election and i said well if that's all that's important to you go for it but it is unconstitutional. Now, all these years later, what happens? Obama tells his attorney general, solicitor general to take the position that DOMA is unconstitutional. Yeah, you were right about that. Uh, I, so, I mean, it's, it's very clear that in the tw in these 20 years, uh, opposing the death penalty is no longer controversial by and large in the Democratic Party. Supporting the ACLU is not controversial, but still there are real questions, particularly after the November 8th election, about what it is that the Democratic Party should or should not do looking forward. I mean, what's your sense of it as someone who has left the Democratic Party? David, what, what, let me just say this about that race. In the general election, I, I won very handily the primary and uh, running against my Republican opponent. He made my support of same sex marriage and consider this 1996. There weren't a lot of people running who supported marriage equality at the time, that was the core of his campaign, and that's why I lost that race, mm -hmm. was my support. Mm -hmm. And all the Democrats were running away as fast as they could from me. The Democratic Party here wouldn't even mention my name in their campaign literature. And I see very much the same happening now. It may not be the same issues. I mean, Hillary Clinton uh, opposed marriage equality when I was in favor of it. In fact, for many years after I lost that race because of my position for yeah. marriage equality. 
She only changed her position when the polls said that it was okay to do that. And it's and President Obama as well, by the way. Remember, his, his thinking was evolving over all those years, he said. But I think what we see is a very cowardly Democratic Party. They were cowardly during the Bush years. They were cowardly during the Obama years. Uh, imagine what the Democratic Party would have done if George Bush or any other Republican had been in office and he was holding his Terror Tuesday meetings in his Oval Office putting together a list of people to be assassinated, including U.S. citizens. Mm. Well, because it was a Democrat in office, there were no Democrats speaking up about this. The same thing with regard to accountability for torture, accountability for all the lies dragging us into the war. And, and uh, I think a lot of people have very short memories, but the two secretaries of state under President Obama, John Kerry and Hillary Clinton, both voted and helped pass the lies concerning the war against Iraq. And I think that's absolutely unconscionable. The people ought to be held accountable. When you vote for war, you ought to know what you're talking about. And instead, Hillary Clinton especially went out and gave speeches perpetuating these lies being told to us by the Bush administration. So talk to us and a little I, bit about the Justice Party. In, in what ways? I think the most interesting thing to see would be in what ways does the Justice Party differ from the Democratic Party? Well, first of all, we are very, very concerned about the corrupting influence of money in politics. And we hear almost nothing from the Democratic Party about major campaign finance reform now mm -hmm. uh, because they are feeding at the same trough of special interest money that the Republicans have been feeding from. Uh, it, the Democratic Party has become the party of Wall Street. They're sponsored by the financiers. Uh, when President Obama first ran for office, he received more from Wall Street than any candidate had before. And then Hillary Clinton was getting her pre-bribes from firms like Goldman Sachs by going and speaking before she even started running for president. It was, what, two years ago this last October, she was pocketing hundreds of thousands of dollars from Goldman Sachs for giving a couple of speeches. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are pre-bribes. These folks know what they're doing. They knew what they could do with President Clinton. It was a former Goldman Sachs CEO that was his Treasury Secretary that got President Clinton to repeal Glass-Steagall, which I think was devastating to our economy, and to do away with the regulation of derivatives. In, in the uh, uh, Commodity Futures Modernization Act of 2000. These, these, these kinds of actions by the Democratic Party simply are a betrayal of especially the middle class and the poor in this country uh, and to our economy generally and the economy worldwide because it helps lead to this disaster that we experienced and a lot of people really haven't recovered from. Hmm. So, and the other thing is their support for not, not only unnecessary wars, but illegal wars of aggression. Uh, there, when President Clinton was secretary, or excuse me, Hillary Clinton was secretary of state, uh, we're bombing Libya, uh, making sure there's regime change, but they had no plan. President Obama said it was the biggest mistake of his administration that they had no plan in place for what was going to happen after they went over and, and basically invaded and, and in a certain sense occupied Libya. Uh, and then what we did in Syria, uh, there, there was no constitutional compliance by Congress there. It was the president going off on his own completely contrary to the war powers clause of our constitution and completely contrary to international law mm -hmm. under the United Nations Charter. One last uh, thing so, I want to touch on. We, we do have very limited time, but I, I want to get your thought on. I know that you were uh, you were born into a Mormon family, but are no longer Mormon. You've expressed significant concerns over the, the church's prior treatment of uh, black Americans, particularly b before they were allowed to be priests. What's it like living in Salt Lake City as a former Mormon? Is that is, is there anything unusual about that or notable? Uh, well, people in the LDS Church look down upon people leaving the religion, but I think a lot of people know of my commitment to our community, my commitment to principle, 
And uh, I have a lot of LDS friends, but Salt Lake City is actually a very progressive city. Mm -hmm. And that's why mm -hmm. I was able to win by a 20% margin when I first ran for mayor. And then uh, I won by a smaller margin when I ran for re-election. But that's after I was calling for the impeachment of President Bush and speaking out all over the country against the Iraq war and doing a lot internationally on issues like climate change. So uh, I, I, we got a lot done. Uh, when I was mayor, but I think that it, it, it was a perfect case example of how, if you stick by your principles, people will respect it and you can get a lot done. You don't need to keep cowering like this Democratic Party has been doing, where they're basically unrecognizable from the Republican Party on so many of these issues that matter so much in our everyday lives. Matters of peace and war, the the tremendous disparity in income and wealth, greater than at any time since the Gilded Age in the late 1800s. Uh, Democrats are part and parcel of that. And uh, if you look at Thomas Frank's book, uh, Listen Liberal, mm -hmm. he, he paints mm -hmm. the whole history of this evolution of what was once considered the People's Party to now the party of Wall Street and party of war. Yep. Great book. We interviewed Thomas Frank not too long ago. Uh, we've been speaking with Rocky Anderson, former two term mayor of Salt Lake City. Thanks so much for talking to me today. Great to be with you. Thanks a lot.